Alrighty, here is a little technique you guys may not have seen. I know a lot of guys in the uh, Discord channel were trying to figure out how to raise or lower their terrains and using L3DT. I will show an easy way of doing it inside a terrain builder so you guys can see right now. And here it is. So we take my map and this is a reasonable size map. Um, let's have a look at the properties on this one. 4096 we can see it's uh it's 20ks but i'm going to show you how to do large areas very very quickly so this is a technique a lot of you guys may not have seen and it goes like this get your sat map fade it down a little bit so that you can see below it where your height map is okay so um your height map will be just there and if you want to make it easier drag your normals down put that as the next one and what you'll find is when you drag this down our normals back up you can actually start to see where the land and everything is see there you can see the actual depths and heights right so what i find is a trick i've taught myself get it to an area where i can see where the water's going to be and the land's going to be then all you want to do is make sure you've got a shape layer selected come up here and we're going to start creating a polygon so for this sample i'm just going to do this whole section here Theoretically, you can do the whole ocean if you wanted to. It is a quick one, and you get the drift. Create a polygon, and as I said, because we've faded them, we can kind of see where they are, and this is kind of handy if you want to lower water in mass areas and be fairly accurate. So you can just click along the edges, and I'm doing this very rough for the moment, and remember, doing this once is done for all time, so if you take the time... I don't like this demo. You sit there and you zoom in and you sketch right along the edge. You can get a very accurate sort of uh, depth to your water and, and even where the water starts and ends. So this is what I love about it. So I'm going to speed this one up really quickly so we can just kind of see. So ignore the uh, crudity of this demo. It is simply just a demo to show you exactly how to lower a large body of water to a regular depth now some of you guys might have noticed if you do an import you don't get the water at a very good depth sometimes it's like 20 centimeters deep and that's not very good so for this demo we're just going to come up to here come across to here and we're going to finish we've got a shape so there's our shape we're going to lower that down now if you look down the bottom here in your elevation and we move around we can see the elevation changes and we can see this says zero that says 72 meters and it goes up and varies all through these elevations well zero means you can probably have just a bit of water lapping across the top we don't want that how do we do it inside a terrain builder no one's ever taught me this it's just a way i figured out but i will give credit to xvi16 better known as jay for showing me something a little bit extra i didn't realize about this now watch carefully all we're going to do is right click and we're going to use the select all vertices or select contained terrain vertices it'll take a moment while it analyzes that process. Now, if you zoom in, you'll see some dots. You move in, more dots, more zots. <laughs> you get the picture. All right, so now on the on the left here, we notice if you've laid yours out the same as mine, the properties tab. If you don't see that, you wanna make sure that you actually have it turned on inside of here so you can actually see it. Now, there is various options you can choose, minimal, maximal, medium, so on and forth. I will explain some of those in more detail later on. For this one, let's change the elevation. So let's get this down to, and I'd guesstimate, we're going to make this probably minus, let's make it minus five meters. That's a good depth. We click OK, and nothing will appear to happen for a moment. So if you just wait, you'll notice nothing seems to be happening, and you go, oh, that didn't do a single thing. And if I look down here, it still says zero. It's going to trick you like that. So here's what I figured out. Once that's all good, Go up to File, Export, go to your Terrain, re-overwrite your original height map, replace it. And now what's that are doing is because you've altered it inside a Terrain Builder, we're now exporting those modified uh, terrains. Saving it won't just save it. You actually have to edit it. Now, go back to Rasters. We move around here, it still says zero. But now, if we go into our height map, we right click and hit refresh. 
it's going to refresh what we just saved. Remember what we set it to? Minus five meters. And now as it gets towards the end there, and if we zoom back in over here, and we look, we'll notice the elevation. If we're looking down here, elevation, now watch. There it is. That whole section done inside a terrain builder is five meters. Now we go right into the next section, it goes to zero. So I did that as a demo to show you guys. Now, obviously, if I did hit the play button and we sat here and waited for loaded up, I could demonstrate it to you. But I think you guys get the uh, drift because we all know how long it takes to wait for this silly thing to boot up. So there you go, guys. Um, I hope that helped a few of you guys out uh, with the process of actually lowering and raising your terrains inside of it. There is another way, too, where you can set elevations as a minimal um, and a maximal. And I will explain those in details because they are tricky to use properly. So it took me a lot of toying around to figure out what BI exactly did with that one. And I figured out their technique and it actually does work. So there you go. Uh, I think that one was a quick little mini help that I've thrown out there for um, Fishy. There you go, brother. Enjoy. Let me know how you go. Give me some feedback.